Welcome back DIYers. So you know I love diagnostic tools and I've reviewed a couple of other scanners on my channel before, but this one I'm hoping kind of steps up my game a bit. It's the Ancel DS300. Take a look at what we have on the box here. It's a professional diagnostic tool. Complete and extensive OBD2 diagnostic capability covering all vehicles with OBD2 port after 1996. Support reading fault code, clearing fault code, reading data stream, etc. Reliable wireless Bluetooth diagnostic tool, convenient and quick and connected to all vehicles. Extensible system diagnostic software and maintenance software. 7 inch screen real time display bringing good human machine interface experience. And it's from the OBD Space Technology Group, made in China. Some other product parameters is the model DS300, screen size 7 inches, resolution 1024 by 600, working voltage 5 volts, working current 2.5 amps, working environment, some temperatures, and storage environments stuff. So let's get this box open and see what's inside. So it comes in a nice carrying case. That's always much appreciated. Oh, this does look profesh, don't it? Now obviously it has a little Bluetooth adapter here. I guess that connects to the tablet. And this is what I'm guessing is just a charging cable. Let's look up here. We have our power button and a set of IO ports, huh? USB-C and then a USB-A. We'll find out what that's for in a minute, I suppose. You know, this thing looks nice and rugged. It's got this rubberized coating over the edges of it. And the plastic has a nice little texture to it. Yeah, it feels really good in the hand. These buttons are very clicky and solid feeling. It's got a little stand that pops up. So it'll sit like that, you know. That's kind of cool. It feels like a pretty nice little skookum tool. We have the free snacks as usual, and also a user's manual. Charging port is type C, and it's also for debugging. You got the power button, the VIN button to read the VIN code, and it kind of goes over some of the other buttons here. Kind of tells you where your OBD port might be located. Do a long press of the power button to turn it on. We're gonna select our language. Connect to the Wi-Fi. Hmm, interesting. The Wi-Fi must be set before you can use it. I kind of don't like that. I like my devices to be standalone, so it'd be interesting to see if it works without the Wi-Fi. Maybe you just need it for initial setup. We're gonna test that. Now, one of the things that really sets this type of tool apart from those cheapy AutoZone scanners or the little Wi-Fi with your phone app thingies is that this tool is fully bi-directional which means you can send commands to the car for further troubleshooting. And this should have all the special manufacturer unique codes to interface with different modules. And here it gives you some examples of the rich maintenance and reset functions. The maintenance light, steering angle reset, battery matching, ABS, throttle matching, brake pads, DPF, anti-theft, injector codes, blah, 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 blah. Lots of stuff that you really need that you can't get from other scanners. And this guy also has the capability of saving the diagnostics too, per vehicle. Now this is really interesting. This scanner can connect to some other modules via USB. For example, a USB printer or a oscilloscope or endoscope or a Bluetooth battery tester. You know, that's all kind of interesting. I might have to look that up. I'm very interested in the oscilloscope. Maybe something we can test in the future. So let's power this thing on and see what we see. Welcome, leading tech and diagnostics. Cool graphics. So I can't remember from the manual if this thing is touchscreen or not. Hey, yeah, it is. It's touchscreen. So we do want English. Do next. Let's see if we can connect to the network. Agree to the terms. Are you sure you want to use the device? Yeah, sure. Please slide down quickly to open the Wi-Fi connection and quickly open the screen recording and screenshot function. Oh, I think this is just telling you that you can do a swipe down to pull up the menu. Let's try that out. Do a swipe down. Yep, look at that. Now, I didn't actually set up the Wi-Fi, which it said it needed the Wi-Fi to connect before it worked, but, you know, I guess it doesn't really need that. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Let's give that a try. Okay, I got the Wi-Fi connected. I don't know. Maybe we should try clicking update, see if there's any updates. Click here to view the full software list. Click here to filter the car model software list. Click here to filter the maintenance software list. Hmm, okay. Ah, uh, we have a list here of upgradable software, and then a list of all the software that's already up to date. Now, we should probably update some of these things. I'll update the auto search, whatever that is. Oh, 
Fiat Abarth Alfa Romeo Lancia. Definitely need that one. Should probably do the Ferrari one as well. Land Rover Jaguar. Gonna need that one. I'll do the Maserati one and the Mazda one. Sure, why not? Should probably grab the Porsche one too. Looks like we have a TPMS update. Need that. Here you can see like the little progress bars. We're waiting on those. And we're downloading these ones here. It's kind of cool. It's got a little battery status over here as well as a network speed. Ah, in this menu we have some more things we need to download. I guess you could just download all of these, but uh, you know, why bother if you're not going to use some of these things? Like obviously these Chinese manufacturers are not going to have here, so would never use those. And I'm never going to touch a Hyundai with a 10 foot pole, so I'm not going to bother with that. Let's see if we can go back and see what else is going on while this is downloading. As you can see from the home screen here, you can go to your settings and whatnot, or you can hit the little shortcut button up here, go straight to settings and app update. We already took a look at that and updated our apps. Hmm, this is interesting. Apparently they have some extra things in here, like FCA diagnostics. See, I thought this thing was gonna be an all-in-one thing. You didn't have to buy extra modules for it. So that's a little bit concerning. I don't know, we'll see how this works out. I'm just curious, how much would that be anyway? Ah, so this is interesting. So if your car has a security gateway module, then you have to buy this extra diagnostics that they had to license from FCA. Ooh, ouch. It only lasts for a year and it costs 128 bucks. Now what you can do instead of like purchasing this is you can buy a little bypass module that'll bypass the uh, security gateway in the car, but you have to basically permanently install that in the car. Some of the vehicles like the Dodge Rams that have it, uh, they're easier to access and you can just access it with a cable. But with the Alfa Romeo, Giulia and Stelvios, it's kind of buried up into the dash. So it's, you kind of just end up having to permanently install that bypass module. But if you didn't want to have to install modules, you could purchase this. And then I guess this thing would work just like a, a WeTech scanner, which, you know, that's nice, but it just stinks. You know, you have to buy that stupid Fiat. You can add customer information in here, your business information. It's kind of interesting. Probably will never use that. Report saving email. I don't know what that is. I'll just go back, cancel, cast screen. Not really sure what that means. Perhaps you can broadcast this screen to another device. Well, kind of interesting. Remote assistance. Quick support. Yeah, sure. I accept. Sign my life away. That's so interesting. So this has TeamViewer built in. I guess so the tech support can remote into your device and fix any problems. It's kind of cool. I'm going to just exit out of that for right now, though. You got some help. I'm sure this is going to connect to a website. You got a fac. Is that is that all the help is? Is just a fac? Well, okay. Good to know, I guess. I guess if you're having problems, you can reset the firmware. You can restore factory defaults. We'll cancel. We don't need to do that right now. File management. Don't have any files stored right now, but... Oh, that's kind of interesting. It says phone storage. This thing's obviously using Android, huh? Yeah, there we go. Android. Oh, it thinks we can take pictures too? That's funny. Nothing good hidden in here, I suppose. Here we can adjust the brightness. Photo album, huh? Does this thing actually have a camera on it? I don't see a camera on it. Why does it say photo album? Maybe that's one of the USB modules that you can put on this guy is to take pictures. It's kind of interesting. Oh, screen recorder. That's kind of cool. So you can actually record what your diagnostics are showing. That is actually really cool. That's a cool feature. I like that. Ooh, use 24 hour format. I like that. We'll stick to freedom units. Thank you very much. Ah, I wish you'd switch the time zone. I was wondering why it said 5.30 in the morning. Put it to central time. That's better. Go to the about section. Have our software versions. Okay, I'm only guessed by the zeros on the network speed that our updates are done. Of course, there's still more updates that we could do, but I just don't need to do them right. Let's click on module, see what we have. Oh, these are the modules that can be plugged into the USB here. Like I said before, I'm very interested in this oscilloscope module. Obviously, I don't have the doohickey to hook it up right now, but I'm going to have to research that. That's pretty cool. It's going to be a very handy feature. What is this consult thing? Special function playback learning. The operation steps of the special functions of each brand can be viewed for playback to help users learn the operation of the special functions of each brand without connecting to the vehicle. Interesting. Okay, they only have GM and Ford in here, but okay. ABS module replaced brake pads. Coming soon. <laughs> okay. Well, this uh, feature isn't really fleshed out, but I guess it's good in theory. Oh, it has a user's manual on the device itself. That's always handy in case you lose the paper one. Yeah, I think it's just everything that was in the paper one. It's fine. Ooh, 
Something we should test out. Is all this stuff accessible when I turn off the Wi-Fi? Let's go back to the user's manual now that the Wi-Fi is turned off. Ah, uh, yeah. So this thing goes out to the internet to get all this stuff. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a crutch. You know, it'd be nice if they actually stored that information on the device itself. Make this thing a little bit more standalone. Because, you know, what if you're out in BFE somewhere trying to troubleshoot something, you know? Service videos? Yeah, it's going to be the same thing. All right, let's turn the Wi-Fi back on then. This is kind of interesting. The OBD fault code library. And it just says Google search. How about a P2026? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of interesting that you can just do that right on the little tablet here. But I don't know. You can do that on my phone, too. It's kind of a pointless feature. Why is there nothing in service video? I feel like there should be something there. Coverage list. It's kind of cool. And you see a list of all the things that it supports here. Alpha Romeo, for instance. We can click on that and see what it says. Select the vehicle. Lots of stuff that we'd never got in the US. Uh, let's check 4C. Select the year. It doesn't matter, they're all the same. Select the system. Oh yeah, okay. Engine control module, select the function, live data, sub function, blah, blah, blah. Ah, uh, I mean, I guess this, since it came up, it means that it has support for it. Uh, okay, that's fine. We'll test this out in a minute anyway. So that was the consult. Uh, take a look at the file. This is where you can like save reports and whatnot. Maintenance. Okay, cool. Here's where you have all your resets. Oh, it's probably trying to connect to the dongle here. I'm going to have to get this plugged in. Oh, this is a shortcut to your files. Shortcut to home, right? Home. There you go. Now, I've just been using the touch screen to scroll and whatnot, but you can scroll with this little D-pad here too. That's nice. Well, all right, let's try this thing out on a vehicle. See what you do. Now, one of the cars I always like to try these sort of things out on is the 4C because the 4C is kind of uh, eclectic. You know, if it's going to work on this thing, it ought to work on a lot of other things too. And also, it's just kind of fortuitous because it's time to reset the oil change maintenance light on this thing. And even though there is a manual procedure for it, I can never get the pedal dance to work right. It's it's not just one of those simple like press the gas pedal three times thing. No, it's complicated and it just never works on this car. So anyway, I have the OBD plugged in down there. Let's see if we can get connected here. All right, it's scanning the VIN. Yay, Alfa Romeo 2015 4C Coupe. It found it. All right, so let's go to common functions. Hmm, I was kind of expecting oil reset to be in common functions. All system special functions. Oh, a health report. Okay. Let's see what this health report does, huh? Oh, it's got a couple of things in here. I think I'll save these for later, huh? Well, that's kind of nice. You can input all the information. I'll just skip that. Cool. It saved it as a PDF. That's nice. I can go back and look at that later. Maybe let's uh, go back and do a system scan. See, what's the difference between a health report and a system scan, I wonder? Ah, the system scan shows you everything that it can read. Kind of nice. You know, I'm going to go back to the system scan real quick and just let it go ahead and scan all these things. What I think is kind of cool is that I have multi-ECU scan, which is made for Italian cars, and it works off of your laptop and a USB dongle. And it actually works like really fantastic. But in order for you to be able to scan like the body control module versus the ECU, you have to switch out some special adapter cables to actually get it to work. But here you can see it just shows it already. That's kind of nice. Okay, so it just went through and scanned all the different systems. And now it shows us all the different tests it can do. That's kind of cool. Yeah, there's a lot in here. Hey, look at this. Oil change. Now... I'm assuming I can just go ahead and do it from here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. So I know where it's at. Let me go back. So now that we have this like connected and I know where I can go get the oil change done if I wanted to, I'm just going to go to maintenance and see if it's in here. Oil maintenance reset. It's connecting for full function product if not successfully performed a special function menu please use smart diagnostic or traditional menu please go into special function or actuation test to perform the procedure huh and alfa romeo is not listed in this list it would be up here at the top right uh maybe fiat switch ignition on it is automatically search uh, it found the 
car whether you want to scan your system automatically sure why not go for it scanning okay communicating with the engine module special function okay oil change all right do it this command updates the parameters relating to the oil change in the control unit yeah continue oh that's very interesting it shows the last time it was reset continue once the command has been sent turn the key to stop and wait for the end of the power latch all right so continue turn the ignition key off ignition key is off we continue now we're waiting i guess it's waiting for something i don't know what it's waiting for turn the ignition key on thing screams like a banshee okay we continue all right cool it says it did it and it shows how many miles is left on the oil change that's kind of nice click continue function is finished procedure end close all right i'm gonna go back i'm gonna go back i'm gonna go to the instrument panel because uh there is a chance you have to do it twice special function okay reset service information okay this will reset the service information continue press okay service information has been reset all right well cool so this thing can at least do that all right so now i'm in my 2012 land rover and these guys have a lot of different modules so let's see if the ds300 can read them all i'll start off by just hitting the vin button see if it connects and everything yeah cool it picked it up all right let's just click health report and see what it does it looks like it's scanning all the different modules which is great and it's finding some faults well it found some faults here and that's kind of interesting because we don't even have a check engine light on the dash so let's uh see what some of these are got some air fuel ratio and oxygen sensor problems and camshaft profile control performance uh that doesn't sound good all of these are historic though, so they're not active, which is good. Oh, the left mirror heater output is intermittent, okay. You know, I really like the style of report. As you can see, it really went through all the different modules. That's pretty awesome. These dang Land Rovers are kind of complex. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the report button. I'm gonna say okay. I'm just gonna skip all this part. And this little report that it puts out is pretty nice. Like if you were gonna scan this and give this to your customer, you know, this would be a really good description of what's going on. I'm gonna save it to the PDF here. I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna go ahead and clear these DTCs. Mm, cleared all the other ones, but I didn't wanna clear these out. Let's see what it has in here for special functions. What kind of resets does it have? Service interval reset, that's always good. Oh good, you can reset the air suspension. These things have an automatic leveling air suspension in them, which is actually pretty awesome, but sometimes you have to change out the struts. And whenever you do, you have to redo the, all the calibration stuff. And it looks like it has all the good stuff, so yeah, that's great. It has the steering angle calibration, it has stuff for your headlamps, your battery, your brake bleed, which is kind of cool that, you know, you can do an automatic brake bleed on some of these cars. Yeah, uh, it's got a lot of good stuff in here. EGR, powertrain. Okay, yeah, it's for the transfer case and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, this thing seems really capable. I mean, there's tools designed specifically for these Land Rovers, but... You know, why get one of those if you have multiple vehicles and just get something like this with like the DS300 and do all your cars. If you go into system selection, you can go into all the various different modules. And if you want to do some different systems, like you can go to actuation test. And here you can also read live data, which is good. You know, check this out. Here you can select various things to read in real time. And there's a lot of different things in here. I'm just select a few things. Let's hit OK and see what it looks like. You see here, if we were getting misfires, it'd be showing us misfires and showing the current engine cooling temperature. That's just what I selected. Unselect all, uh, maybe we can grab a couple other things. Let's do ambient air temperature, barometric pressure, maybe throttle position. Man, there's just so much to look at. Now let's take a look at ignition advance. Click OK. All right, we can see everything in real time here. Let me blip the throttle a little bit. And you can see everything change. It shows you the standard range that you can expect and also it shows your, your min and your max. Oh, and you can record it. That's kind of cool. That can be really useful. Let me stop the recording in her file name. It saves it whatever those TC files are, so we'll have to investigate that later probably. But yeah, I'm really impressed that it can record the live data like that. That's really cool. That can be really useful in a lot of different scenarios. And seriously, like this is just the engine control module. And look at all the different inputs you can you can record. Looking for knock, that's useful. 
and just all sorts of stuff. And the modules you have in here, the TCM, ABS, SRS, IPC, it's your instrument cluster and uh, steering angle sensor, occupant restraints, wow, it's crazy. Headlamp control, HVAC, navigation control, good grief. Ride level control module, here we go. Wonder what kind of data stream is for the ride. All you can see like when the compressor is running. Oh wow, yeah, this is really useful. So you can see like whenever the air suspension thinks the doors are open or whenever you hit the lowering switch or not. Has the comp air compressor temperature? That's crazy. Let's check out the front right corner height, rear right corner height. And I'll click on the uh, raise switch and the lower switch. And let's see what happens. All right, here we go. It's showing us we're at 0.02 feet and zero feet. And we're in the middle setting. So I'm gonna hit the uh, lower button here on the air suspension. Let's see if it, yep, it says open. And here we go, we're going down. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, I'm gonna hit the up arrow. And yeah, I press the up switch. You said it's a open right there. And the air suspension goes up. I'm gonna hit the button again. And then we go up again. <laughs> okay well this is just fun to mess with let's take a look at the compressor relay yep i can hear the compressor running and it shows that it's on let's give it a second and see if it shuts off and there we go i just heard the compressor kick off and it shows that it's off on here very cool and so far i am very impressed with this little thing now let's try it on a car that's a little bit of a weirdo all right now we're going to try out the ds300 on the fiat and the Fiat is kind of weird because it, the engine control module is a Morelli and everything else is Mazda. So it's a little bit of a weird car to communicate with. Oh, and I want to point out that the little stand on the back of this thing is pretty good at hooking onto the, like, the steering wheel, just like that. All right, let's hit the VIN button and see what it does. Ha, ah, it says it's a Mazda. That's pretty funny. Okay, so it obviously picked up on the Mazda body control module and whatnot. It's not liking the Fiat here. All right, so it wasn't able to automatically identify this vehicle. It does a basic OBD check just fine, and it does read the VIN number correctly. Well, it can do some very basic live data just through OBD, but it doesn't have a whole lot of stuff here. And you can do obvious stuff like readiness status and that sort of thing, which is all good. Just to make sure I have the right software, it's got the latest version of Chrysler, latest version of Fiat, and the latest version of Mazda. So, you know, I would hope that it would pick up the Fiat. Wonder if there's a way to manually input it in here somewhere. Let's go to Fiat, manually select, let's do Fiat. I'm not seeing the 124 listed here. It's got the Hornet in here, that's hilarious. It's got Ram pickup trucks. Spider, okay. She's a 2019 prompt information. What the hell does this mean? Oh. 28% of what? Okay, well, let's see. Let's do a health report and see if it'll scan everything. Okay, scanning the body control module and the PCM, TCM, which it doesn't have, but yeah, okay. Oh, radio frequency hub. Got a fault in there, which I know I do because I have an issue with my key fob, but that's pretty cool. Ooh, boy. So we have a couple of problems in the BCM and the radio frequency module and the entertainment telemetric module, really. Well, I'm definitely gonna store this as a report. Please correct mileage information, why? Uh, yeah, it's like 30,000 miles, whatever. 30,962, yeah, skip all that. You know, save it as a PDF. And I emailed it to myself so I can look at it later. I'm just curious, if I click on this, what will it do? Yeah, that's not helpful at all. Googling that comes up with like a map to, what was it, Montreal? Yeah, I don't think so. I'll have to dig into these error codes more myself later. See if I can just clear them. Give that a try. Well, they cleared for now. I guess I'll always check and see if they come back later. Let's do the system scan. Shows you all the different control modules that it's equipped with, which it's a manual transmission, so I don't know why it's showing a transmission control module. It's kind of weird. Let's communicate with it and see what it shows us. Yeah, error communicating with it. No kidding. It's not actually there. Now let's just try any of these other ones. The PCM, you know, that's the ECU. 
Let's uh, read the data stream, see what all we got. Ah, here we go. This is all the good stuff. Yeah, lots of good live data in here. Ooh, we have knock sensor voltage. Wastegate status, that's pretty cool. You know, multi-ECU scan is something that I use on this these type of cars a lot. Um, one thing it does not show is things like this, like knock sensor voltage. I just wanna see what these look like. And let's take a look at throttle angle too, sure, why not? Let's see what this looks like here. Let's give this thing a little blip. Yeah, that looks like good real-time data to me. And this thing could be useful for data logging. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's got a lot of useful information in here. This is good to be good stuff to have. Now let's take a look at special functions. Miscellaneous function, what is this? A uh, clear misfire TLC and clutch pedal learn. That's interesting. Reset accelerator pedal adaptives. Throttle body self-learning. This is all good stuff. Check out the actuator tests. Cool, the wastegate, after run coolant pump. Those things go bad on these things sometimes. Activate your ignition coils. Activate your multi-air solenoids. That's what those are for. Fuel pump relay, fuel injectors. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, this is really cool that it can read the ECU, but let's see if it can actually read the BCM too. Since that's one thing that the multi-ECU scan can't do, that's more focused on Italian cars. And since this thing goes back and forth, it's like half Italian, half Japanese. Yeah, okay, so we can set up some basic things in the BCM. I have the basic model, so I don't have like auto wipers or anything like that. Take a look at the data stream here. Oh, let's just to see if this uh, works. Let's take a look at brake pedal status. Click OK. It's released. I'm going to push on it. Uh, okay, so I guess that doesn't actually work. Uh, maybe the hazard switch will work? Let's take a look at this. Hey, that works. Not sure how useful any of this stuff will be. Yeah, okay, so I think the BCM stuff is kind of limited in here. I don't know how much that's really necessary, but at least obviously it can read the codes. Let's take a look at the ABS system though. That's uh, useful. Read the data stream. Oh, well now my ABS light is blinking on the dash. That's kind of funny. You know, maybe we can see things like our hydraulic line pressure, Oh, we can see our wheel speeds. Those are kind of nice. Hopefully they should be showing zero at the moment, but you know. Let's take a look and see what we see. Yep, our wheel speed is zero miles per hour because I'm not going anywhere. Let's see if I hit the brake pedal, you can see the pressure come up. That's kind of cool. It's all good information to have. See if there's any codes. There's no codes. Ah, that's great. We got system tests. You can check the actuators. It's cool. Miscellaneous function. Oh, TPMS reset. That's always useful. Yeah, cool. All right. Man, I'm pretty satisfied with this. Even though we had to manually select the car, it couldn't read it automatically. But manually selecting the car wasn't really a problem. And everything's working great. Man, yeah. I'm overall pretty pleased with this thing. I think this is going to be a very useful tool for all my projects. Because I see a lot of different kind of cars. And I'm going to have some other cars in to test this thing in the future, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. And of course, if you want to get one for yourself, there will be a link for it down in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Hopefully I'll get some of these other modules to test out.